So, I'm cheap. Naturally, that led me to walking into a pawn shop and buying a laptop for $250 that clearly was worth significantly more than that. And weirdly enough, it was still brand new and in the box and from Canada. Strange. The problem is this. All my previous laptops I have owned have been either extremely overpriced, at least for me and my budget, and either come out of the box under spec flimsy or with a horrible screen, meaning they need to be replaced significantly sooner than I really want, wasting a ton of money. Something I don't worry about nearly as much on my desktop due to hardware being upgradable and cheaper. So over time, you just kind of even out the cost. Not wanting to buy another laptop borrowed from Canada by a skinny man wearing a designer jacket and track pants, I decided something. Either I can get a really good Windows laptop for a decent price that is not stolen, so I can either keep it longer or be able to easily replace it without spending $800 or selling my dignity, or I'm biting on the soldered SSD and RAM DIMMs and just buying an even more expensive MacBook Pro in the hopes that I can actually enjoy using it. So this is it, a $200 laptop that is so good, I bought three, which might turn into four. God help me. I wanna first go over specs and initial impressions. This is a Lenovo ThinkPad T470S. This hit the market in early 2017 along with the T470 following the T460. They came with Intel Gen 6 processors and for some reason some came with Gen 7 processors too, I don't know. This one in particular came with an i5-6300U and this one came with an i7-7600U and integrated Intel graphics, 520 and 620 respectively. I'm focusing on the i5-6300U due to the accessibility of it and the very cheap pricing. Definitely a far cry from my desktop's Ryzen 7, but it is still a perfectly capable CPU today. Plus it comes with a little red nipple. I don't love or hate. If you learn how to effectively use it, from what I've told it could change your life. But so can heroin and going to the gym, but I don't feel like doing either of those things. It comes with a 1080p IPS matte display that has insane viewing angles and overall looks pretty decent. I like it, it's okay. And speakers that are, well, they function, I guess. They're not amazing, but I can hear the audio, even if the quality isn't spectacular. Plus, literally all of the ports you could ever want, need, or use. USB-C, Ethernet, regular USB, SD card reader, a SIM slot I don't have time to test, a little card thing if you're a businessman and you, I don't know, unlock laptops with credit cards or whatever this is for. And it comes with a keyboard unlike anything I have ever used in a compact laptop before. I really don't know what it is about this keyboard or if I've only just used trash laptop keyboards, but I enjoy this one almost as much as my proper real mechanical keyboard on my desktop. It even comes out so you can replace it. I mean, come on. Mine came with some light keyboard wear on the screen, some gamer grease wear on the trackpad and palm rest, and some minor nicks on the edges, maybe some minor scratches. Nothing crazy at all, especially for the price. That is, until while cleaning it, I broke a piece of the keyboard and then got super glue all over the laptop, so that was great. Other than that though, build quality is exceptional. It is also made partly of magnesium and pretty solid plastic. It's durable, high quality, and the screen can do this, whatever, whatever this is. I don't know, it, it does it though. I just don't understand why this is a $200 laptop. There must be something wrong. Well, there's the problem. Buying these can be tricky, especially since these laptops are generally designed for businesses to give to employees. They get sold in large numbers, causing supply to go up and prices to drop. So they're cheap, but that means buying these can be a little bit different from a standard consumer laptop. Sometimes if you keep an ad on eBay actually, you can see companies drop ThinkPads for insanely good prices. Like this T495 I just got, it was $250. Thanks Arsage ThinkPads. For my T470S, it didn't come with any form of storage and the lister indicated they did not test the battery, meaning I needed a new battery and a new M.2 SSD. And because this laptop takes two batteries, not just one, it would cost me between $100 to $150 to replace both batteries. But they are easily replaceable, unlike some other laptops I've looked at. Even one stick of RAM can be added, if you need it. I've even seen people online just say they replace one battery and use it, which probably is what I would do to save cost if I was keeping this laptop. But that is definitely something to consider for your budget, since most of the batteries in these laptops after five years or so will be either on their last legs or just bad entirely and need immediate replacing. Mine actually started bulging a little bit, pretty much as soon as I got the laptop. <laughs> Some places straight up remove the battery before selling too, and quite a few seem to remove the SSD before selling as well for, I don't know, data privacy reasons or whatever. So if you're planning on buying one, keep a lookout for the descriptions. 
If there is no mention of the batteries being fully tested and working, assume it is going to be needing replacement soon. Also make sure if you didn't budget for a new SSD, avoid any without storage already in them, or you will be stretching your already tight budget a little bit tighter just to get an operating system installed. And lastly, if you see a good deal that is low on RAM, you can easily buy a new RAM stick and throw it in, but only one RAM stick, because for some reason one of them is soldered onto the board and then the other one isn't, so whatever. Now, the real question is, is this actually worth anything in 2022? It doesn't matter how cheap a laptop is if you can't actually use it for anything. So let's see. I got Windows and Ubuntu installed on it for testing, expecting Windows 10 to just not like a Skylake i5. Because, I don't know, it's it's been like 18 years. But I actually didn't end up using Ubuntu that much because after installing Windows, it loaded right up and honestly it was <laughs> really slow. I don't have any footage of it, but trust me, it was slow. I almost disappointedly went back to Ubuntu and started looking at MacBooks while buying ramen for the next month and wondering what pseudo wudo has to do with Linux commands. I started to upgrade all my drivers, my BIOS, whatever else, and I let Windows do its thing and update, and it completely changed the laptop. Since then, I have actually been using it daily for everything that I'd been using my stolen laptop for, and I haven't missed it one bit. I actually have ended up using it more because even with the bad batteries, it still lasts longer than the behemoth that was my old 17 inch 900p laptop. Plus, it actually fits in my camera bag. That's a first. For usability, web browsing is fine. It's a basic task and basic games like FTL and SNES emulators work great. Along with some older games like Fallout 3, Terraria, Stardew Valley, Half-Life 2, half those games weren't even that old, but still. Even dolphin games seem to work really, really well on this thing. Not all of them, but most of them. While you're not going to be playing any AAA games made in the past decade or two, more basic games and older games run shockingly well without issues. I can easily watch movies, YouTube, browse the internet without any significant issue on or off the battery. But game streaming was met with limited success. For the most part, I don't know why, but I couldn't even get Steam game streaming to work. I tried multiple times, different Windows installs, don't know what's up with that. But for Parsec, the CPU in this laptop doesn't really have the umph required for 1080p game streaming. It causes a lot of lag and a pretty unpleasant, unusable experience overall, at least for my setup. If you're into heavy gaming, look into a more workstation grade ThinkPad or possibly a ThinkPad 460 with a discrete GPU, add it in for about a hundred extra dollars. Or getting a Gen 7 Intel i7, and maybe you'll be able to eke out some extra streaming performance out of that. But gaming laptops are always going to be more expensive versus regular business class laptops, just due to how much less often people buy them. And you know, the whole entire extra graphics card thing. I also managed to get some very basic photo editing done on this with some files from my 5D Mark II. And shockingly, I was actually able to edit 1080p video at half res in Premiere. And even at full res, it works pretty well. 4K might be a little bit too much, especially if you're color grading or adding really any effects at all. But if you keep a basic timeline, you can actually get some work done on the go with this really cheap laptop. <laughs> Rendering wouldn't really be ideal on this, but if you do need to get some editing done on the go, you can do it. I would prefer to edit a video on a laptop and then render it out on the computer. But if you really want to render out a video, you can always set up your PC to render videos remotely. Although that might be too much work unless you're just doing out a local network. I don't know. Overall, spectacular performance for a 200-ish dollar laptop I bought on a whim. And while my batteries were bad, reported as being at about 50% health overall, they still gave me about three hours of light usage. Although I didn't test gaming because that would just have been cruel on a bad battery. So this laptop really is great right now. But the problem is in three years, I'm not really sure if it's gonna be as usable as it is now. Obviously Linux will run great on anything made after like 1850. But if you want a regular laptop that doesn't require you to open a terminal to install Minecraft, this one already doesn't support Windows 11, let alone whatever Windows vomits out past that. Plus Windows 10 will be losing support in 2025. And the CPU is already starting to show its age sometimes if you put a heavier task on it. So spending a few extra dollars for the 7th gen i7 that is in this laptop might be a better idea if you want to keep this laptop for a while. It still won't support Windows 11, but it does have a little bit more power and the next generation of Intel integrated graphics. And in my experience, it's only about $50 to $100 more. This one here was actually about $30, $40 more due to it just missing a whole battery. But either way, you will have a solid laptop that will be a hell of a lot better than a $200 Chromebook or just a consumer grade Windows budget laptop, especially if you go for the i7 and add some RAM in the future. 
So I think I'm covered for now. Although there are some nice 4K Lenovo laptops. So I don't really like doing outros anymore, but I really wanna know what you guys think of my laptop review. I have never done one before, so just let me know if you guys like more of the tech stuff or not, and let me know if there's anything else you wanna see. I'm considering doing some budget photo slash video editing workstation stuff, hopefully around the $200 range. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know before I spend all this money on something that no one's gonna want. So <laughs> thank you guys for watching.